please continue with your dessert. Please continue with your dessert, but you know, it's beginning to get late and we want to have enough time so that we can have the full program without having to close too late. So we're going to get started, but enjoy your dessert. Um, you can, hopefully by the time I finish and President Otumbayeva speaks, you'll be finished. Well, my name is Carl Gershman. I'm the president of the National Endowment for Democracy, and I'm delighted to welcome everyone to this dinner of the New York Democracy Forum, which is a joint initiative of the NED and the Foreign Policy Association. I want to begin by, as was already done, by, by thanking our sponsors who have made this evening possible, the Herbert Foundation, Peabody, and Rio Tinto. Thank you very, very much. We have a lot of special guests with us tonight, but Bob Miller has already introduced Dick Gephardt and Alejandro Toledo, so I'm not going to introduce them again, but I want to let them know how honored we are to have them with us this evening. They're great friends of ours and great friends of democracy. This evening is a very special evening. When we originally planned it, it was intended to be an opportunity to honor an extraordinary individual, Takia Elbegdorj, the president of Mongolia, and through him, his country, which is not just a very remarkable new democracy, in an extremely difficult and not very democratic neighborhood, but also a country, as you will learn during the course of the evening, that is now playing a leading role in extending democracy to other regions of the world. And then, because this happens to be a week when many world leaders have descended on New York, we learned that Rosa Otunbayeva, the president of Kyrgyzstan, would be in town, and we're thrilled that she accepted our invitation to join us on this occasion. Like, like President Elbegdorj, President Otunbayeva is a very unique leader who is helping her country find its own path to democracy in a way that is truly remarkable. Mongolia and Kyrgyzstan have taken different paths to the same goal of democracy. Mongolia's democratic transition in the period after communism was something of a miracle. The transition hasn't been without its rough spots, but it transpired in a way that was peaceful, inclusive, constitutional, and uninterrupted leading to the establishment of a parliamentary and presidential system in a region where democracy is non-existent and parliaments are at best artificial rubber stamps for a strong presidency. Kyrgyzstan's transition has been more difficult. It became an independent country following the collapse of the Soviet Union but it, it inherited the structures of the old system. That system was overthrown by the Tulip Revolution in March of 2005. But authoritarianism continued as the new leadership betrayed the democratic goals of the revolution. And then came the third revolution of April 2010, which brought Rosa Otunbayeva to power as an interim president whose job it was to manage the transition to democratic elections. That revolution was almost immediately followed by terrible ethnic violence in June of 2010, and many people in the United States and elsewhere gave up on Kyrgyzstan. But to everyone's surprise, the parliamentary elections held in October of 2010 were successful and peaceful, and the process was set in motion for presidential elections that will be held at the end of next month, on October the 30th. If Kyrgyzstan succeeds in this transition, it will become Central Asia's 
first democracy. A democracy with a strong parliament that stands out in a region where all the power lies in the hands of strong presidents. Because Kyrgyzstan is, for the moment at least, alone in its region in building a new democracy, President Otubayeva has reached out to President Elbegdorj for cooperation and assistance. In a letter written last June, she wrote how strongly the Kyrgyz Republic values the success of friendly Mongolia in building a democratic society with a prosperous economy that is, harmon that, that is harmoniously integrated into regional and international structures. And given, she wrote to President Elbeg Dorj, the possibility, given Mongolia's positive experience in building parliamentary democracy, I urge you, she asked President Elbeg Dorj, to consider the possibility of sending a delegation to the Kyrgyz Republic of Mongolian politicians and specialists in constitutional law with practical experience in establishing legislative and executive powers. Having President Otumbayeva together with President Elbeg Dorj at tonight's dinner, and they met tonight for the first time, is one of the things that makes things a very important occasion. And they're sitting next to each other now, sharing experiences and ideas. And one final point. After the Kyrgyz presidential elections are held on October the 30th, Rosa Otumbayeva will voluntarily step down from the presidency. This is her intention. This is not something that presidents ever do in her region. It is unprecedented. It is, it is bold, and it shows that she is a woman of true integrity, and it also demonstrates how deeply she is committed to democratic principles. So I am very, very proud this evening to present to, to you the President of the Ki Republic of Kyrgyzstan, Rosa Otumbayeva.